Hi, before you go forward and finish this video, listen to me. This is a very new approach where we are going to teach you English through different practical situations. Of course, don't think about grammar. Don't try to speak perfect English. Just get into the scene, get into the character and understand how the conversation takes place. This is very important. Don't try to copy my sentences. Just understand the sentences and you will understand what kind of sentences, what kind of words, vocabulary, idioms, phrases are used in conversation. I'm sure that this new method will definitely help you to be a better communicator. We are changing gears and this is only for you. I'm sure that this new method of learning English will help you to be a better and confident speaker. So let's start here. Here there are two characters. First is a HR, another is a CEO. And the topic of discussion is the attrition. The attrition going on in that organization. Now listen to this discussion. And after the discussion is over, I will explain you which words, vocabulary, idioms and different phrases are used by these two officers. So let's start. Hey, hi Sandeep, hey, how are you? Have a seat. Hello sir, how are you doing? Thanks for your appointment. There's one thing that's lurking at the back of my mind since many days. So today I thought that let me bring it to your notice. So I have come here, sir. See, I know you are a very vigilant and senior HR. You are always on your toes. Come on, jump in. Well, thanks a lot for your compliment, sir. Sir, uh, since uh, many days I felt like uh, I should talk about this. Since last couple of months I have found out that the attrition rate in our organization has gone up steadily, it's moving steadily. Though it is not a red flag yet, but I feel we should not be complacent. We should take cognizance of this and take appropriate actions. Oh, absolutely, you hit the nail on the head. Please tell me, what's the problem? Of course, we have to be very serious about this. It's good that you brought this effort to my notice. Which department is the most hit? Of course, IT, sir. We have normal attrition, which is normal, I mean, run of the mill. There is nothing new in that. But in IT department, I have seen a big attrition rate, which is quite alarming. Okay, how much is the attrition? Sir, actually 24% of our IT employees are jumping the ship. Usually 10% is quite normal. I mean, it's run of the mill, as I said before. But 24% is quite alarming. And this has skyrocketed just in the couple of months, past couple of months, to 24%. Oh, what must be the reason according to you? Of course, sir, work from home. What else will be the reason? Work from home? You mean to say they just now want to continue to work from home? Yes, sir, they want to work from the comforts of the home. Yeah. But what makes it so appealing to them that they are ready to change the organization also? It's habits, sir. It's a human habit, human nature. Now they don't want to commute to office. It sucks their time, their energy, their money, and it's, it's full of hassles uh, coming to office and going back home. On the contrary, some organizations are offering them to work from home, which has become a very lucrative option for them, and that's the reason why they're just jumping the ship. But don't you feel that will take our productivity in a downward spiral? We did that during pandemic, I agree. But now they should be back to office, back to the campus. That's what I said, sir. It has become a new trendsetter. And people are reluctant to come to campus and other organizations are following suit. So what's your take on this? Sir, the strategy is stopping this flow. Because if it keeps on going, we will lose some of our prodigy. And you know, this will be a big blunder which we can't afford. Does it affect our productivity and quality? No, sir, not at all. In fact, the productivity has doubled by, and actually it has grown leaps and bounds. They are working with full throttle. And of course, on the flip side, it has helped our organization to save on parking and housekeeping and catering services. So it is really beneficial for us as well. Then what is the bone of contention? Why we are not allowing them to work from home? Well, actually other departments, they have to come to office and they are grumbling now. They are saying that we are coming to office, we have to go through all the hassle and traffic and all. So you have to give us a 10% salary hike compared to the IT employees. That's the real issue here, sir. Oh, all right. 
So what's the way out of this? Sir, I'm a bit skeptical about giving raise of 10% to the employees of other department, but I'm quite worried about losing our star performers. If we lose our star performers, well, it will be a big setback for us. We can find a golden mean out of this. We can give 5% hike to the employees of other departments and we can make one day compulsory to all the employees of IT department to be in the campus. Due to this, these IT folks will come to the office and the other department folks also will get some better say, salary rise and they'll feel good about that. This sounds pretty cool, sir, I think. This may be arguably the best solution available right now. Well, what are you waiting for? Go and draft your new policy. Hope it will be a game changer. Yeah, we have to go under their skin also and we also have to take the care of our organization also. So it's quite a tightrope walk, but we have to do this. Yes, sir. Let's give it a try. I'll be back with the right policy. I will draft it properly and get you back. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Sir, I need a favor actually. Give me a couple of days. I'll do some homework, research, and I'll be back with a new policy with all the changes suggested by you. By the way, hats off to you, sir. A really nice solution, and I'm sure it will work. Well, you are also a major stakeholder in this decision. So, come on, give you 100%. Well, sir, let's hope for the best, and we'll prepare for the worst as well. See you, sir. Thanks for a valuable time. Have a good day ahead. See you. See you again after a couple of days. Come with a new policy. Bye-bye. Take care. Hey, hi. Okay, so this is the part three now. How was the part two? I hope all of you enjoyed. Now, in this part three, I'm going to tell you actually how some words and idioms and some phrases were used. But, but, but before going ahead, please take a pen and notebook, write it down. And most important thing is, you have to again go and play back the video so that you will understand actually how these words are used how these words are practically used by speakers so that when you actually go in real life you can use those words and this does not mean that after watching those videos making the notes you'll be able to speak confidently in the first go no it will take you some time and you have to keep and maintain a proper vocabulary notebook for this okay when you as i said before when you watch the video you will understand how sentences are formed and how to use these words so <laughs> here we go the discussion so first word was lurking. You, you may have uh, heard me using this word lurking. Lurking means the pronunciation is lurking and the meaning is, <coughs> sorry, remaining hidden. Uh, if something is hidden, this word is used. It is, it can be a thought. It can be a person also. So you can make a sentence. Second word was used as at the back of my mind. It is not a word actually, it's a small phrase. And what it means, it means that something is there in your mind. So you can use the word like something is there at the back of my mind. I, w I have used that word also. Jot down its word. Next was vigilant. So the pronunciation vigilant. Okay. Vigilant. Vigilant means be careful. You have to be very careful. You have to be very vigilant about the dangers. I use that word. You have to be very vigilant. And of course, not only you have to jot it down, you have to use these words in sentence in your notebook. That's very crucial. Okay. Next point is on your toes. You may have seen I use this word on your toes. Okay, I told you like you're always on your toes. So there are some people who are always on their toes or we can say like, I remember uh, whenever our teacher would come, our PhD guide would come, we would always be on our toes. So what it means, like always alert and attentive. Ready to act. All right, jump in. <laughs> it's a slang. Jump in means what? Instead of saying like, Come on, join us or jump in is another word. It's a slang language. Okay, now red flag. Red flag means, as you know, red flag, red flag means it's a sign of a danger. And this can be used like we can say like, you know, uh, if a boy is not following uh, the home rules and if he's coming late, there's a red flag for the parents. Something like this. Next one is, okay, this word is used, complacent. <coughs> okay, complacent means what? Complacent means you, you are careless actually, you become careless and satisfied. You may have heard Amitabh Bachchan using this word in the Corona advertisement, complacent. So don't be complacent, he says that, right? Okay, cognizance, what was used by me? Cognizance means take note of something. So we can say that finally the boss took cognizance of his hard work and offered him promotion. 
you you make it don't just wait on me depend on me count on me you do it hit the nail on the head means what it's a idiom actually and if someone says exactly what you wanted to hear what is exactly right you can say you hit the nail on the head you hit the nail on the head you can use that use that idiom and make a sentence now another one is attrition as you know like if you're from any particular it field there is a lot of attrition people leave job that is attrition another word was used that is run of the mill now this <clears throat> this word has um, many meaning actually this phrase has meant two meanings actually one is something which is irritating and uh, which makes you angry but another is very common very normal so i have taken the second meaning very common and very normal go back and see how i use the word it's a run of the mill next one is at an alarming rate alarming rate means what instead of using the word like at a very high pace we can use the word alarming rate we can say that uh ha, the 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 water in the river was rising at an alarming rate alarming rate next was jump ship jump ship means like to change the organization or change the political party also <coughs> there are some politicians who jump ships so this can be used in a in this way it's more appealing than using like changing the side or changing the organization you can use this make you looks your english more attractive skyrocket sky rocket it goes up means what there is a increase very steep and rapid increase you can say that the prices of fuel have skyrocketed recently in india in fact everywhere appealing appealing means what attractive and interesting uh well we can say like uh in this way yeah. this shirt looks very appealing this shirt looks very appealing we can use right you also do it and next is commute well see we said like, i travel from home to the commute that's called as commute when you go from your home to office that that traveling is called as to commute hassle means irritating inconvenience we can say like it's a hassle nowadays to travel um, on road it's such a traffic jam and bumper to bumper traffic is there hassle <coughs> it's very inconvenient on the contrary means on the other side okay means what you expect is something else like on the contrary opposite case like instead of getting angry on the contrary he helped me on the contrary make a use of this see the pronunciation lucrative lucrative pronounce it lucrative okay now meaning is of course uh, producing a great deal of profit with this thing we can say like uh, as i use in that particular skit um, very lucrative uh, job offer means very attractive you can't resist that you can't deny that you can't say no that something like that downward spiral it's going down 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 means what we can say that uh, okay if your communication is not good your career will suffer a downward spiral it will go down 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 and down because any it's like we can call it as like a domino effect negative domino effect it goes down and down and down so here we go trend setting trend setters a trend to set a trend trend means what trend means uh, a new normal a way a path a methodology trend setter we can say like uh, Huh. Uh, MS Dhoni was a train setter for Indian cricket team because he made us believe that we can also win. Train setter. He set a trend of winning. Train setter. Blunder. A lot of big mistake. Actually, it's a stupid and careless mistake. Like yesterday while making tea, I added salt in the pot. It was such a blunder. prodigy a uh, person who is very talented by birth like intelligent person like uh, oh well i don't come in the category of prodigy i'm not a prodigy i really actually i mean it leaps and bounds means too much now this is an idiom i you can use like you can, you, you can say like oh my english is improving by leaps and bounds nowadays after joining my institute full throttle throttle is a technical word actually throttle it's a mechanical word full throttle means go with full energy and zeal like we can say of course you can use in driving also uh, i was on full throttle and i drove at the speed of 120 or whatever it is or they they were working with full throttle 
full throttle. You can use that. Bone of contention, well, we can say that uh, that particular uh, area, that particular issue is the main problem. <laughs> uh, we can say that, well, Kashmir is a bone of contention between India and Pakistan. Something like this. Okay, now let us move forward. Grumble means always some people complain. That is a grumbling. See the pronunciation? Grumble. Okay, do you grumble? Stop grumbling and start working. Now, skeptical means another word is like it's not easily convinced, like doubts are there, reservations are there. As I use the word, like um, I was a bit skeptical about that person. I don't know whether he will help me or not. Skeptical, doubtful, reserved. Golden mean as you can like say so, so me and my dad finally came to a conclusion and we came to a golden mean that we both will share the car or whatever it is. Golden mean means both of them compromise. And arguably means it's not hundred percent, but arguably means we can argue and uh, there may be like we can say Virat Kohli is arguably the best batsman in the world. There may be another, but he is one of them, arguably. A game changer, not only in cricket, but a game changer means a person who is the mover and shaker, you know, makes a big difference. So we can say like, um, <laughs> using psychology and communication is a game changer for me and for you as well. Okay, so get under someone's skin. It means positive also and negative also get under someone's skin means to irritate someone, it is possible. Or another is like to understand and uh, positively uh, want to help even if the person does not expect or want to be helped. So I use this uh, idiom C properly. There's another meaning also, but I use the second one. Tightrope walk always, you know, handling home and office is a tightrope walk for working women. <sighs> Keep your fingers crossed, uh, hoping for the best. That is, keep the fingers crossed. One word was there. You hats off, sir. At, at the end, I use that. Means kudos to you. Well done, sir. And now it is stakeholder means the person who is one of the important part of that particular mission or organization. We can say that customers are the biggest stakeholders in any organization. So guys, this was it. Hope all of you enjoyed. And you're going to take note of all these things and going to work on your communication skills. I hope this video will help you to be a better and practical, confident speaker. Implement this. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.